This is Catholic Daily Mass Readings and Reflections for February 15, 2022, Tuesday of the 6th week in Ordinary Time, Year C. First reading is taken from James chapter 1, verses 12 to 18. Response Serial Psalm 94, verses 12, 13a. 14 to 15 and 18 to 19. Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, verses 14 to 21. First reading. Blessed is he who perseveres in temptation, for when he has been proven, he will receive the crown of life that he promised to those who love him. No one experiencing temptation should say, I am being tempted by God. For God is not subject to temptation to evil, and he himself tempts no one. Rather, each person is tempted when lured and enticed by his desire. Then desire conceives and brings forth sin, and when sin reaches maturity, it gives birth to death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers and sisters. All good giving and every perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no alteration, or a shadow caused by change. He willed to give us birth by the word of truth that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm Blessed the man whom you instruct, O Lord, whom by your law you teach, giving him rest from evil days. Blessed the man you instruct, O Lord. For the Lord will not cast off his people, nor abandon his inheritance. But judgment shall again be with justice, and all the upright of heart shall follow it. Blessed the man you instruct, O Lord. When I say, my foot is slipping, your mercy, O Lord, sustains me. When cares abound within me, your comfort gladdens my soul. Blessed the man you instruct, O Lord. The Acclamation Alleluia, Alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my word, says the Lord. And my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia, Alleluia. Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, verses 14 to 21. The disciples had forgotten to bring bread, and they had only one loaf with them in the pot. Jesus enjoined them, Watch out. Guard against the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. They concluded among themselves that it was because they had no bread. When he became aware of this, he said to them, Why do you conclude that it is because you have no bread? Do you not yet understand or comprehend? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes and not see, ears and not hear? And do you not remember when I broke the five loaves for the five thousand? How many wicker baskets full of fragments you picked up? They answered him. 12. When I broke the seven loaves 
For the 4,000, how many full baskets of fragments did you pick up? They answered him, seven. They said to them, do you still not understand? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's reflection on the readings. In the first reading of today, James understands human nature. He knows our tendency to doubt God's goodness and his plan in times of difficulty and he writes in order to help us think rightly about God's nature and his goodness toward his people. So James chapter 1, 12 to 18 serves as protection for us when we are not able to decide between good deeds and evil deeds. It guards us against having wrong views of God and of our situation. James offers three points to keep in mind that help us think rightly about God in times of trial in verses chapter 1 verse 12 and 13 to 15 and 16 to 18. It is difficult for the one who is in pain to equate suffering with being blessed. But this is the adjective James uses to describe those who remain firm in their faith and keep confidence in God in the midst of trials. While the verse has much to say about our response to suffering, the main focus is on the promise of God. God has promised eternal life to those who love him, that is the crown of life. The call to steadfastness is a call to faith and trust in God. While this may seem to imply works and faith-based salvation. We know from scripture that our love for God and our enduring faith are both gifts from him given by his grace. James understands human nature as weak and can easily fall and he knows that when the pressure is on we will be tempted to sin. Amid that temptation we may be inclined to point the finger at God and to accuse him of being the source of our temptation. But James wants us to understand God rightly and he wants us against accusing God of being a tempter. In order to prove his point, James appeals to the holiness of God. Because God is holy and cannot sin. He cannot be tempted and he will not tempt anyone to sin. In verse 14, James explains that our temptation to sin does not come from outside of us, but it is an inner battle. The source of our temptations is the evil desires of our own hearts. In verse 15, James speaks of our temptations and desires coming together to conceive and then gives birth to sin and that sin grows and gives birth to death. God is holy. Since he is holy, everything that comes from him is good and perfect and that even extends to our trials. Even our trials can be seen as good gifts that God allows in order to produce greater things. God does not give us anything that is intended to harm us or cause us to sin. Everything that comes from his hand is for the growth of our whole being. When we are blurred and confused, we can find hope in God. The world today is seen as cursed by sin and struggles. But God has promised to make all things new. We are a kind of first fruits 
as even now god is making us more and more into the image of his son the gospel of today speaks of the blindness of disciples they were traveling across the lake in the boat they had forgotten to bring food with them and there was only one loaf between them all as they crossed the lake jesus is talking to them keep your eyes open be on your guard against the yeast of the pharisees and the yeast of herod for the jews yeast was a corrupting agent because it caused fermentation that was why at the pasch they ate unleavened in corrupt bread and paul tells the corinthians get rid of all the old yeast and make yourselves into a completely new batch of bread unleavened as you are meant to be jesus is telling his disciples to avoid two opposing kinds of corruption that of the pharisees which is based on narrow minded and intolerant legalism and that of herod which is based on immoral and worldly pleasure seeking however the disciples are not really listening to their master they lash on to the word yeast and link it with their present thing not enough bread they were worried about their food then jesus began to be harsh to them saying that once we start loving the things of this world we would start living for the things of this world Jesus was telling the disciples that the reason you still worry about your provision after being with me for months is that such kind of teachings have affected you that you didn't even consider how i can supernaturally move to provide for you after all the miracles i have shown he wanted to open their eyes to the reality of where they are and teach them to be in a state of surrender and worship unto him prayer lord jesus we thank you for your word that satisfies our hunger sanctifies our soul makes us healthy and help us to surrender ourselves our needs our desires and assures us a crown of glory help us to be aware of your blessings and gifts in our daily life may almighty god bless us the father the son and the holy spirit amen